hello guys first of all thanks for coming to the workshop and i am rupak mishra and i have been working as motion graphic designer at nf state for past 3 years and currently i am working at manita uh, so my key role uh, revolves around creating uh, video and animation and its components for marketing as well as product uh, so before we get started we start with the after effects i would like to tell you guys what will be the format of this workshop so it will be easy for all of us to move along so we'll start i have a few slides with me that i would like to share with you guys it has it's a very small presentation about the fundamentals and principles uh, and then we'll move on to getting familiar with the after effects interface and then uh, we'll start off with our animations so let's uh, start off with our presentation i will share my screen but hmm. okay so we are starting off with the motion design so i should i think i should uh, address this also like what is motion design so motion design is uh, basically a subset of graphic design where we uh, where we use principles of uh, graphic design and moving objects from the real world uh, for storytelling and, and making video animation so it uh, it uses the concepts of uh, graphic design originally and takes inspirations from the moving objects in the real world how real world reacts uh, so that's it for motion next uh, also in motion design it itself is such a huge spectrum that it consists of several things like 2d animations 3d animations vfx compositing uh, stop motion and there are few more so many big studios uh, mostly focus on one to two things like 2d animation or 3d animations uh, where they, their expertise lies uh, so i myself have been uh, doing 2d animations and sometimes character animations so it's better to have one expertise and then slowly if you want you can expand your uh, horizon in other fields also so there are few key principles which are uh, followed in animation uh, which are also called disney's 12 principles of animation if you guys google it disney's 12 principles of animation you will directly get it i will quickly run through these 12 principles one by one uh, and the we we'll go go on to the first animation and let's see what it is first one so we have the first one is squash and stretch the squash and stretch is the basic uh, principle of uh, like it adds a life to your animation the more squash and stretch you add to your animation the more flexible and tangible it will appear and the less you apply the more firm and solid it will appear so basically when you are animating your character you define few characteristics of your uh, object okay i want it to be little flexible or i want it to be little short uh, solid and according to that you apply this uh, principles the next one is the anticipation so anticipation is uh, basically an action you take before your final move so if, uh, like when if for take an example like when you are going to jump you will definitely bend your knees you will first bend your knees and then you will jump so bending your knees is a is a anticipation and the jumping part will be a final action so that is for, so that works for many of the things now it will seem really odd if you don't bend your knees and you try to jump uh, so, uh, the third one is uh, our staging so staging is very simple concept taken for, uh, directly from the graphic design uh, where we take few key a few graphic elements and we try to point out or focus on a like focus on something important in the scene like some text it can be some text or an important aspect of your character or your character itself so you we use base different elements to focus on a certain things that sh that should be in the focus or is important for the viewers next one is straight air and pose to pose so guys this can be a little tricky one uh, i will try to explain my best for this uh, and if you guys you can later on you can go ahead and google it in detail later i will try to explain what this means so straight ahead and pose to pose are basically two two similar principles that are mostly used for frame by frame animations uh, 
so in this uh, what, like in pose to pose take an example of a guy jumping from position a to position b uh, and now we'll define what will be the pose of the character when he is starting and when he is ending we will define these two poses and we'll define one more key pose in the middle where he is up in the air so here i is in the ground uh, in the middle section he is up above uh, up in the air and in the third one he is uh, on the ground again so these are three key position once we define that we'll fill in the frames again by drawing different position that term is gradually it is showing that it's slowly jumping from this position to this position and again landing on the ground so this is called pose to pose and it gives you animation uh, like a sharp and because because we have defined the poses and we are filling in between things and straight ahead what happens we don't define the position that is coming ahead we start off uh, our initial with our initial position and we slowly uh, slowly and gradually draw every frame uh, every frame by frame uh, and uh, comes to the end when we come to the end we'll have a more like fluid animation like it's much more smoother than the pose to pose so obviously this depends on uh, your uh preference which uh, how you want to do how you want to go ahead with the animation like for example if you are most of, most of time when people do a walk cycle animation uh they go for pose to pose uh, and when they like uh, making some cell animations like a uh, liquid flowing through or uh, anything uh, or uh, like transformation in a liquid kind of way then they use mostly straight ahead because it gives us more flexibility there so moving on to the next one the follow through and overlapping so follow through and overlapping uh, imagine yourself uh, walking now when you walk uh, your heads and your hands will move at a different rate than your legs uh, that is called overlapping and follow through like while walking when you suddenly stop your whole body will not stop suddenly like your legs will stop but the you if you have long hair or you are wearing earrings it will stop after few frames in the real world it is called inertia here it is called follow through next one is slow in slow out is a it's also a very simple it's also taken from the real world for example take a car uh, the car always will start slow and then take a pace and then again it will uh, stop very slowly and that works for most of the object in real life also uh, so like it starts off slow takes a pace and then again stops so this is it for slow in and slow out the next one the arc okay arc is very interesting thing because it's basically how our nature or real world works anything uh, in the real world you often observe like if you throw or anything falls or you push someone uh, it will move in an arc formation nothing in the world walks like robot like okay left right again straight no, no no one goes like that so even when you are walking you can see your feet moves in a arc way it doesn't go like straight ahead and down it always moves in a arc so that's the basic principle of arc so like if you apply arc to your animation it basically captures the essence of the nature in itself uh next one the secondary animation this is like walk if oh, i i i am taking lots of walking examples guys and because it's always easy to have a, a personal reference so you can guys imagine it yourself so if walking is your primary action then your secondary animation can be your subtle movement of your hair uh, or your your shirt uh, flying because of the air flow or uh, your earrings moving and like your walking will be the primary action and other little little small small movements that adds extra characteristics and dimensions to your uh, object will be the secondary animation the next one will be uh, timing okay we are talking about video and animations and all uh, so timing is the most important and key part for everything like even in singing and dancing timing uh, timing is a plays a huge part same thing goes with the animation uh, so timing basically adds an characteristic uh, 
basically we can say uh, features to your uh, uh, object by for example in uh, in this uh, given example in the presentation you can see like in the in the first block the small block as soon as it touches the big one it moves uh, at the same uh, same rate so it gives us a feeling that okay the big object is very easy to move or is in the mood to move easily and in the second one you can see uh, the big block takes a little time and then it moves so it shows that the small block is requiring some effort to push the object so we can uh, we can depict that okay the bigger object is a uh, heavy or it's uh, not in the mood to move and so basically uh, you you can uh, define the characteristics of your object uh, by adjusting the timings of your animation next one is exaggeration uh, adding exaggeration to characters of course make them dynamic but also makes them delightful uh, for example, I, I will take the given example itself. You can see like here basic concept is that, that small block is getting uh, absorbed by the big block. That will be our, like our basic uh, concept. Uh, it can be for any explainer videos or anything. So here they have added a little trail of dust particles to the small one to show that, okay, it's flying. It's like a butterfly, it's flying. And then the bigger objects uh, have a teeth appearing and he is uh, eating the small object so basically this uh, if you uh, think this was not required but it was added there just to just to uh, give us an uh, impactful uh, view that okay that something big is happening here here uh, it is it is not something boring uh, there's something dynamic and something very impactful going on so that's how exaggeration work and basically it depends on your creativity and uh, you're out of the box thinking what you can do with uh, simple small blocks or any animations to and how do you exaggerate it. Uh, next is solid drawing. So, so in every field, when you dig deeper, uh, uh, you need to have a basic understanding of how uh, how anything how how thing works. Uh, like the, in the in the graphic design or animation, uh, so when you go do very complex stuff, uh, when you go a little deeper, so you need to have an understanding of uh, how uh, your uh, how your uh, volume and uh, different volume shading, lightning, and different characteristic of your object works. Like in a different scene, in a scene, if there are like different objects and there is only one source of light. So the uh, lightning and shadow of objects will not be different from each other. It will not be pointing out in different direction. All the shadows will be in the same direction. So this is like understanding uh, the characteristics of your own object uh, in a, a three dimensional space or you know, how you draw it and uh, how you define its volume. Uh, the next thing guys, appeal. It is what the word suggests, appeal. Uh, appeal is uh, like anything you, if you are making an animation, you're making a video, at the end of the day, uh, viewers are going to watch it. And uh, the, uh, viewers should watch it and it should be appealing to them because if your animation is boring and there is no fun to it, or no one, is, it, you know, no one can understand it, uh, there is literally no use of making that animation. So at the end of the day, when you make an animation, you, you make it in a way that it's easy to understand, it's delightful, people should have fun or any emotion that you want to portray with your animation. Uh, so basically, it should be appealing to your viewers. Uh, that's the 12th principle, guys. And then again, we'll, I have like a small one, one more thing that I want to show after that. I will ask some doubts. Uh, so they are like fundamentals of motion design. These four properties, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. These four things will play a key role in all your animations. Doesn't matter what kind of animation you want to make. These four will always be there and this will cover most of the, uh, most of the aspect of your animation. 
um, in the workshop also we'll see how these four properties work and how we can uh, use them to make a very good and exciting stuff okay okay guys so if, if you initially install the after effects and open it it will look something like this in the between and it's it is a lot of thing and using those who are not familiar with it so we'll try to we'll definitely make it easier we'll go one by one uh, so we'll first off uh, you can see there is we'll we'll start off by creating a space for us where we can start our animation or drawing so you can see there is a new composition section in between uh, just i want you to click on it if you click on the new composition uh, uh, composition settings window appears uh, you can also add directly access the new composition button from this uh, composition settings so here there are few things you can name your composition i will name it workshop uh, you can adjust the width and height uh, uh, we are currently keeping it 1080 by 1080 we want a square composition where we can draw our uh, animation uh, now uh, here guys there's something called frame rates uh, so uh, frame rates uh, are basically frame rates this basically work as to how much frames you have in one second so stand right now standard frame rates are like 30 seconds sometimes people use 60, 60 frames per second also the most common is used is 30 frames per second but in most of the traditional animations uh, uh, how they use they used to use uh, 12 frames per second or 15 frames per second so but currently we are keeping it at 30 seconds per, uh, per second so and guys uh, you can also uh, adjust the time duration of your animation from here itself uh, you can see there is a time code uh, there this is in uh, hour minutes seconds and frames format so first one is uh, and first one is an hour second one is the minute third one is the second and last one is the frames currently we are keeping it for four seconds only because we require that much for the animation but when you are not sure uh, how much time you require for your animation it might take more than 10 seconds or 15 seconds uh, you can have a shift duration here say like 35 seconds or 50 seconds and later on you can come back and again uh, adjust the duration according to your requirement uh, we can uh, adjust the background color uh, but, uh, from here you can see i will keep it white only of course we can change the composition settings later we can anytime go to our composition windows and we can there is an option com composition settings we can go and we can change the settings everything everything there we can it, it can be changed later also okay guys we'll move on to uh, see how other interface looks like uh, the uh, first one you can see uh, the the top the, on the top the top left corner there there are toolbars so i will not explain all, all the toolbar the most important one which the, that i will explain uh, the first one is home so don't you need you, you don't require that uh, you only require that to access your recent files or something like that since we are starting off uh, it doesn't matter so first one is of, of course selection tool is all we have already selected it so that you can you can use to select any part of the object or any shape layer is there second one is hand tool so hand tool is basically used to capture our artboard and move it uh, anywhere according to miss our eyes how we want we want to prefer it for it like uh, for currently i have too many windows in open in my laptop so i have shifting it a little so i can easily animate it and then next one there's an ellipse tool you can uh, this is basically uh, for selecting different shape layer so you notice that if you click once uh, other shape will not appear uh, only ellipse is selected to so draw a circle and ellipse but if you click and hold on it for a few more seconds just hold on uh, hold on to it click and hold you see different option appears rectangle rounded rectangle polygon tool star tool so we can uh, if you want you can go ahead and we just to show guys how uh, something works 
I will go and select a rectangle tool and we'll draw a rectangle here. Sorry, guys, my mouse is acting weird. I'll select a rectangle tool. Okay. And then there is a pen tool. Pen tool is basically to draw our custom shapes. If we want to draw custom hands or any shape that is not usually in the shape layer, we can use it with the pen tool. And then there is a text layer. We can use it to uh, uh, write text and all. And of course, uh, if you click on the text layer, I hope you guys can see at the right side, in the right side corner, uh, you can see the different uh, different properties of the text layer will appear like character or you can select the different fonts and how your text should look like uh, okay uh, so that's uh, for the tool but for now uh, there is one more important very important tool i will explain it uh, in a few seconds it's called pan behind pan behind or anchor point tool uh, so we we'll go i'll see guys as soon as we selected uh, we draw and we have drawn a shape layer here uh, and a layer appeared in the time <coughs> sorry uh, and a shape layer a layer appeared in the timeline and now we can see the different properties in it like this shape layer if we select it gets selected and in the they are uh, basically you can uh, open it from this uh, drop down there's a drop down icon there you can open the, the uh, shape layer. You can see there are contents and transform. So from the contents, if you see in the contents, we have just only a rectangle. So we can see the content as a rectangle. Uh, and the, the important part that we require now is the transform properties. So we can just click on the transform. You will see the position, scale, rotation, opacity that we have seen in the presentation earlier. Uh, so these four things that will be, for we'll be playing with today. So how, uh, so how an anchor point defines these properties, I will show you. Like first of all, what is an anchor point? So guys, when you zoom in, I want to show you this uh, little uh, symbol in the, in the between. Uh, this is called the anchor point. And this basically acts as a lever for your object. Like at this point, uh, from this point, the object will start moving how i'll show you just one okay, like if a center point if the anchor point is in the middle and guys just go on the rotation properties and try to rotate it it will obviously move from the it will obviously move from the center and now and when we move the anchor point to the uh, wait a minute to the corner our uh, and our animation will happen from the corner. And this goes for every other properties. Like if we scale it, it will scale from that tip only. So uh, that's how anchor points is, uh, anchor point can be useful. You can adjust it according to, to your wish. Like, okay, I want a layer animated from one part. Uh, so I will adjust the anchor point at this corner uh, and it will work from there itself. Now guys, we'll start off with our, uh, animations and what we are going uh, first of all let me show you guys what we, we want to create today so i have i have selected two things the first one will be very simple and easy to create uh, so that everyone gets an understanding of uh, what we are going to create uh, it will be wait let me open. Uh, okay, we are going to create this animation first because it's uh, really easy to create it's uh, only a few layers and everyone can get an understanding of how things works here and then we will move on to one more animation that i'll show you later it's a little complex but definitely not that hard okay so this is for the for the reference here i will, I will create a new composition you guys stay where you, are. you can delete that layer you have drawn earlier okay so first of all we will require is that uh, in the reference you have shown, we, we require two different uh, two different semicircles at first. Uh, so first of all, we create a circle. Okay, guys, I need to define some colors also for myself. Uh, I have uh, I have created a color palette for me to use so that I can quickly uh, go back and forth and easily select the color palette. 
So I will just put white color palette. Uh, you guys can select any color uh, uh, you guys would like. So I want, for the colors, I have selected like uh, three monochromatic colors and a complementary color. So you guys can also start with like that, like same three different shades of same color and uh, one uh, totally different which complements uh, the other color. Uh, if you guys want, you can also go to colors.com where you, does, you can see different color palettes and you can pick from that also. Uh, so I, I've seen, guys, in this layer, uh, since I don't require this layer uh, to move here from here and there, uh, uh, we'll try to uh, we'll try to lock it in a place so that it doesn't move by accident. So you can see there is a, a little lock option on the left side. So you can lock it. So once you lock it, it cannot be moved or anything can be done. It stays in a place. Uh, so whenever you have a reference layer there, uh, which you want to be, which you want to get logged, you can always use this option. Okay, we we'll select on the shape layer. We have already ellipse tool selected. Uh, we'll go ahead and change the color to our very first option. We have selected the color from the fill layer above, just uh, at right top of the composition, and we'll draw a circle. Yes, I think the anchor point is in the center. Yes. And now we uh, we need to... Yeah, I think uh, uh, Kailas has answered the anchor point to all the question. Thanks, Kailas. So uh, we'll, we need to split this in two parts. So what we'll do, uh, we'll try to... Um, mask the half of the circle so we get a semicircle there. So what you select the pen tool and now when you select the pen tool you can see there is uh, on the right side uh, beside the fill option there is a star shape and a mask shape. So when a star shape is selected uh, we can create a shape but when the mask is selected we can draw a mask on top of the shape layer. Uh, just we will uh, we'll create and uh, show you guys. So our shape is layer selected, our pen tool is selected, and the mask layer is selected. Just zoom in a bit. I yeah. will carefully mask out the part that we require. So it got it got deselected. I will go ahead. Uh. So I mask out the half part of the circle. So now, uh, now we need a, a top, uh, when we had the bottom part, we need also a top part, the same thing. So we'll just, we can duplicate it. Uh, so select the layer and go to edit option. Uh, and in the edit option, there are lots of, there you can see there's an option called duplicate. So you just duplicate the layer, and the layer will be duplicated. So after duplicating, it's again, uh, it's, it remains in the semicircle itself in the down part. What we want, we want it flip aside, flip up. So to, to flip the uh, semicircle, what we want to do is right click on the shape layer tool and go to the, there's a, a bunch of options there. Don't worry, there's a transfer op option, transform option that you require. Go to the transform properties. And now you can see there's an option called flip horizontal and flip vertical. So we want to select flip vertical at this time go ahead and flip the flip vertical now our animation got flipped up now you can see guys i think the mask was not properly done so there is a small gap between we can just uh, select the shape layer uh, shape layer 2 and uh, the our pen tool is already selected so we can see the points of the mask and we, we can again click it and adjust it So guys, uh, we have again we achieved a circle, but now it's in a split semicircle. Okay, now according the, in the, our reference, uh, there is, uh, of course, there is a split ball in, in one, more, one more circle behind it, and there is a hollow there. So we want to create all of this. So we'll go one by one and we'll create these things. Okay, yeah, like that. So go ahead and, Click uh, one more 
circuit. First, change the color so that it doesn't disappear. I have selected another color for now. I will draw a small circle in the between. Uh, okay, adjust the circle in the between. So we have this shape and then we have a small circle in the between. And now what we want to do, we want to uh, repeat, basically we want to repeat the same thing that we have done with the bigger circle. Uh, but we'll do that in a while. Uh, first of all, uh, duplicate the small circle also. We'll go to the edit and we'll duplicate it. Uh, what we want, uh, now what we want to do, like like shape one and our shape two is our base layers. So you see there's a, uh, on the left side, there's a, a, blue, a square blue box. Those are basically labels. When you click on it, you can change the color of your layer so that it can be easily differentiated from the different shape layer. See, these two are most important part for us. Uh, we'll uh, color code it differently. So can we can easily uh, handle it later. We don't get confused it with another layer. And now what we'll do, uh, we want our small layers to move with the bigger layers. So we'll try to connect it together. And that can, there is a thing called uh, parenting in the After Effects where we can parent the small layers with the big layers. I'll show you how, I, how it is done. So I want uh, one, one, so one shape layer three to be connected to shape layer one. So what we are gonna do, uh, guys, uh, you can see there is a, a uh, little uh, circular, uh, which is all, which is called parent, which is called a Pickwick probe. Uh, so you can see there is a, a small circular icon there. You can go ahead and click on it and hold it. Click and hold and drag it to shape layer one. Also, guys, uh, if uh, someone had, doesn't have the same uh, some interface, it's because of this. There's uh, a toggle switch in at the bottom, uh, in the bat at the bottom of the interface. So if you toggle this, so the different uh, properties appears, but we don't require that currently. Uh, so we'll again toggle back to our, uh, the, our this board. Uh, this is much easier uh, to see. And we'll, uh, so everyone connected? Okay, now we'll do the same thing with shape layer four also. We'll, sh okay, we'll connect the shape layer four with shape layer two. And now what it does is, uh, if, if I open the, oh, oh guys, open the transform properties of the shape layer one. Now, if you open the transform properties and if you move the position, you can see the sh uh, small shape layer that is connected uh, it also moves with it. So whatever we'll do with shape layer one, that will affect uh, our shape layer three also. And the same goes for shape layer two. So guys, what we want is like, oh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, position it a uh, little far apart. So we'll open the properties for the shape layer two also. Uh, the shape layer two also, we'll adjust the position like this. So guys, uh, everyone adjust your, uh, uh, position your object like this, so it will be easier to move ahead. Okay, so now I will move to the next part. Now what I need is to have a, hollow shape here. If currently there is a circle, but I want a hollow shape there instead of the circle. And so how can we achieve that? So we'll try to uh, alpha mat it. So alpha mat is basically, uh, you, you, I, it just, it's better to show you guys than explaining. It will be fast and more efficient. So just put the shape layer four and the uh, on the layer it is connected to. It is connected to our shape layer two. Our shape layer four is connected to shape layer two. That's where, and now we have to put it on the top. Now what we'll do, see in the shape layer on the right side, you will see there is a two, three, or three, two, three options. Like first one is a mode. Second one is, you can see the, it's called track mat. If you go over, over it, it's called track mat. We'll go and select the option. And there are a bunch of option, option. So we'll go ahead and select the alpha mat shape layer four. And now what it does is, 
it shows our shape layer two in the area of shape layer four, but we don't want that. We want opposite of it. Uh, so what we'll go, just go and select alpha inverted mat. So if we, once when we select alpha inverted mat, uh, the uh, shape layer four uh, disappears from there and that part is not visible to us. Only the shape layer two outside of shape layer four will be visible to achieve the top part. And now here we can keep it like this, but uh, according to our animation, uh, also this looks a bit boring. So we'll make it little beautiful, what you can see. So we'll do the same split thing here. Uh, we'll select the shape layer, go to our pen tool again. We'll select the mask layer, create mask layer again, and we'll and carefully we'll mask out from the center here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tool guide stays selected every time. Ah, okay. So we have this half again. We have a semicircle here. And we'll go ahead and again we'll duplicate it. We are doing the same thing as we have done with our bigger circles. We'll go ahead, duplicate it, and then right click the shape layer and go to transform properties. And we'll go ahead and we'll again flip vertical. Okay. So now we have two different sections and we'll change the top of uh, the top part with the, uh, the lighter version of the color, this one. So currently it lo looks like this. So guys, everyone, so I think our, first part of the animation, first part of the animation uh, basic blocks are done. Uh, we'll go now, we'll go ahead to animating this. So if you guys are ready with this, we can go through. Okay, now we know our both layers are connected to every, uh, uh, other layers. Uh, just see, it. yes, okay, check. I, I was double checking guys, you can go ahead here on the right side, you can double check by through in which layer it is connected. So it is showing here, uh, it is connected to shape layer one. So it's good to go. So now we'll uh, animate the position. So we'll take the shape, uh, shape layer one, go to its transform properties. So, so once op you open the transform properties, uh, there is a option called, uh, you can go to position and beside position on the left hand side, there is a small clock icon. Uh, so once you click on the clock icon, uh, you can see a keyframe is being created. A diamond shape will appear on the timeline on the right side. Here basically your all the work is shown on the right side of the timeline. All the keyframes are shown here. So this is our initial keyframe. And this defines our initial position. Okay, at the start of the animation, it will remain at this position. And now if we move a little further, few frames, you can, now change the position of the object. I'll go ahead and change the position near to the center. Okay. So when I change the position, another keyframe will automatically be created. And now don't uh, click the, uh, the, don't click the clock icon again. Otherwise uh, the, your keyframes from the right hand side will all be deleted if you click again. So we have these two keyframes and our uh, first animation I think is ready. So it's from, it moves from one, one position to another. So now I think uh, everyone is clear with this. Okay, so now we, uh, we are, yes, shape layer two. We'll now animate the position of the shape layer two. Go to this transform properties. Uh, uh, there is a, a same, same thing. Go to position and click on the clock icon. We'll move ahead at the, at the same place where we are, we, are, uh, we have put the earlier one. Go ahead and we'll put, uh, we'll bring, uh, sorry. We'll bring the top one down to connect with it. So we try to connect it, okay. Okay, so we have, uh, animated the top and bottom layer and currently it's showing in uh, this matter. Okay. And now 
you have seen in the earlier in the animation that uh, it was very smooth and now it's very rough and there are uh, very good reasons for it because currently it's in it's in a very linear animation what we want to do is uh, smooth it out so i'll show you guys uh, now it's very interesting part so what we can do is just select the select both the layers uh, once you I mean, once you select both the keyframes uh, uh, once with the keyframe selected right click on it right when you right click on it there will be a couple, uh, bunch of options go to the very last one called keyframe assistant uh, there will be uh, easy ease easy is in and easy is out we only require easy ease for now uh, so go ahead and select on easy ease so you can see the shape of your keyframes changes this basically indicates that uh, now your animations is easy ease basically term for easing out or smoothing out your animation so we'll do this to the other one also other keyframes also so select the keyframes right click on it i can uh, select the keyframe assistant and easy ease now you uh, now if you uh, just uh, uh, hit space on your keyframes you can see how your animation works now it's a bit smoother than the last one okay so i move will move ahead so currently our animation is smooth but we uh, we don't want it uh, it's again a very linear motion uh, it's uh, not how we want we want it like a, a collapsing animation like something a coming and collapsing together uh, so that we can feel the impact so for that what we are going to do uh, our, this we select the keyframes again select the keyframes once the keyframe is selected you can see at the top of the timeline there is a small icon here it is called graph editor can you guys all see the icons the graph editor now once you click on this graph editor something like this will appear or i think not because uh, i have a adjustment to make i think those who have just started out and are not familiar with it i think something like this will appear in your interface so you guys uh, to change it we this is called the value graph and we don't need the value graph we need the speed graph to adjust the speed of our animations uh, to do that at the bottom of it you can see an eye i icon and a graph type option so what you can do just go and select the graph type option so once you go there are bunch of uh, different graphs you can uh, to choose from but we'll go with the speed graph so once you select the speed graph uh, we'll get this type of uh, uh, graph to edit now what do we want to adjust uh, this now we want our animation to start off slow and end fast so to do that we will we will select the beginning of the graph like this is the this is where our keyframe starts we have selected this part we see a little anchor thing here which we can hold and drag see if we go ahead and drag this on the right hand side a nice curve appears it shows how in the time it starts slowly once you hover over this graph you can actually see how much how much its speed is going on like how much pixel per second it's increasing increasing and at the top of it it's at maximum and then again it ends so basically it start it slows out and at the moment when it reaches its peak speed it again comes down so here our animation uh, stops uh, very fast so now you can see the difference between so uh, you can click the space and see the difference between the objects wait ah. so this is a simple one and so of uh, the this is different from uh, uh, the and you can see the difference between the top layer and bottom layer as in the bottom layer we have adjusted the graph in the top layer we didn't so we'll go ahead and do the same thing uh, with the top layer also just select the keyframes again we'll go to the graph editor 
and we'll do the same thing. Okay, so we have both the animations. Okay, so now uh, now it's uh, much more smoother, but we want again it to be a little fast. It's going a little slow. So what we can do, we can uh, select the keyframes and move it ahead in the timeline so that uh, it can move fast. So we can we can go ahead and select both the keyframes for both the layers and move it ahead a few frames. I'll say between five and ten. So now we can see it's very it's, uh, smooth and fast at the same time. Uh, okay, we'll go ahead. So now our uh, first, uh, I think uh, the first part of, of this animation is uh, we'll move on uh, to the next step. So as soon as it collapses, we need something to appear. It means an impact uh, result in something. What we'll do? Uh, okay, I need uh, again. I need a same same circular layer. So for uh, the say, uh, if we try, if we try to draw the same shape layer again, circle layer again, it may be varying in size and height. Huh? But uh, we want the exact, exact same shape. So for that, we can do what we can do is like we can just uh, click on any on the shape layer one. I select the shape layer one and we'll duplicate it we'll duplicate the layer and we'll bring it on top now is the is the half i think we can make i think i have made some mistake ah, okay yeah so uh, sorry guys uh, go and we'll duplicate shape layer one and we'll drag it on top uh, guys, I want you to go ahead and delete all the keyframes that you have made under these layers. I will delete this, whatever the keyframe, because this is a duplicate one, and we want, don't want uh, in, uh, we don't want the layer in this. Also, we'll go ahead and we'll change the fill color of this layer uh, to say this one. Okay. We will adjust its uh, position. It's there. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, I think something weird is happening. I will tell you because why. Uh, so currently we have our mask on on this layer. So when you guys open the shape layer, you can see uh, there is a mask property there. Just go ahead and press delete on it. Uh, the mask will appear, uh, mask will disappear, and the whole circle will appear in front of you. So we'll go ahead and we'll change its color to this. Okay, guys. Uh, I will now wait a minute. So you can see there is a little uh, eye icon beside the shape layer. So this is basically to hide our shape layers when we don't want to see it. so we cannot this is not something to be animated this is just something in the like in a property where we don't want or we don't currently don't want to see this shape layer we'll just animate it we, we will just make it hide it okay so here uh, uh, as our top plug i think we need to change this color also okay uh i i uh, i think uh, everyone can explain that the spacing number of frames between the keyframes and how to move the time and this is keyboard yeah uh i no, spacing of uh, it's already answered okay okay sorry sir uh, okay so now our animation something looks like this and as soon as it collapses we want this shape layer to appear in front of it so what we are going to do we want it to scale from 0 to 100 uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, try to scale the property from here we'll, try, we'll go ahead and what we have done with the position we'll do with the scale 
go ahead and select the scale layer and uh, guys uh, since we don't want the top half part of it you can see you can go ahead and once you hover over the left side of the layer you can see an arrow thing appearing so you can drag it to the right so that our shape layer starts from here and there's nothing here so you guys go ahead yeah and now uh, at the initial position i will keep the uh, scale to zero and after a few four or five frames i think uh, we'll go to 100 so kindly look at this okay mm -hmm. Uh, okay guys uh, and one uh, one more thing uh, uh, for, uh, for now uh, we need to duplicate this layer also uh, we'll go ahead and we'll duplicate this okay so what we have one layer with the scale properties uh, uh, we have currently we have both the layer of scale properties I guys want you to delete the other scale properties we don't require that uh, we'll just make it to 100 sorry so our one layer is 100 and the other one we want to scale uh, already done so what we can do we change the uh, change its color to the our third uh, third purple color okay so currently how it looks is go ahead collapse and this we have just put a simple circle layer above and then we have done one more one more circle layer with the scale properties uh, so the uh, the next one can be the next one will be once we have done we'll smooth it out like we have done with our earlier layers select uh, select the keyframes right click it go to keyframe assistant and easy is and guys uh, there are shortcuts for many things you guys can uh, later on you can guys go go, uh, go ahead and find out different different shortcuts for things currently i am not showing shortcuts because it might be difficult for some people to remember while doing this process so you, after after the workshop you can go ahead and learn all the shortcuts and we'll go ahead and we'll edit the graph also but uh, uh, this time in the graph editor uh, we'll move it from the left uh, from the right side so that our animation starts uh, at a high speed and ends with a very, and ends very slowly so this is how it looks now uh, it's, uh, it's going really fast so what we will do we will just uh, hold our keyframes and we will increase it increase it duration yeah so we have achieved something like this like this now what we require is uh, they they should also be an the, like this uh, here in the first part we have a split layer in between we want the same split layer split layer uh, to in our later part of the animation also so what we can do we will at this collapse at the collapsing point where the two shape layers collapse go ahead and select the split layer i think uh, if anyone is getting confused i will show the previous animation that uh, that is already done so you can understand what we are going to what we are trying to do here Let's see yeah so we want the split uh, this small circle always in the between uh, but with a different color so that's what we are going to achieve here what we'll do i uh, will select these two layers these are the layers that we want on the later part uh, with this layer selected uh, uh, that layer is still selected there at the point of contact what we'll do we'll go to the edit when in the edit part you will see a split layer option there so it's the just uh, just below the duplicate layer there's a split layer option so when we select the split layer 
uh, our the same layer will be split into two part now now we require the other two will move it to the front uh, shape layer 9 and 8 we will move it to the front shape okay so the our shape layer uh, new our new split layers are here uh, we can change the color of the bottom one to green okay so we don't have we don't have to again uh, draw a circle and mask it through we just copied the same layer and uh, didn't copy it also we just split it into two halves because we didn't require the bottom uh, next half of this uh, part so i think now it's going to look like this okay now i think is uh, the, this part is almost done we just have, now we just have to rotate the middle part so now we'll move on to the last part so what's happening when this collapsed when, when the animation is collapsing the middle part starts rotating so to, uh, we need see you guys can see these two are two different parts top and they are two different parts but we want it to rotate as a, a single entity so what we'll do for that is uh, go to the uh, both, you see both the layers are still connected to our shape layer one as because we have connected it earlier uh, we'll go at uh, go here and select none we don't want it to be connected anymore uh, so we will go ahead and uh, make it none at this tool here so that it is not connected to any more any 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 any, any other layer and now we want this two layer to be interconnected so that if we rotate one the other one will also rotate so go ahead and slam will will parent the shape layer 9 with shape layer 8 so once we do that you can see the transform properties in the rotation if you rotate the shape layer 8 shape layer 9 is also rotating versus so what we want is at the beginning of the animation we will again do the same thing that we have done with our scale and position we will click on the clock when the zero rotation is at zero we'll, uh, okay i will zoom out a bit so i can see a bit of more timeline i rotate and now is now this rotation part is basically in our preferences how we want our animation to be fast and smooth so we'll go i i want it uh, okay i'll show you uh, a little bit further like uh, one second 10 frames uh, i'll select uh, the to it should rotate a full 360 degree so once i uh, here i can directly type the value what i want I have type 360 degree. It shows okay one rotation, uh, and again also I want it at this point. I want it to bend a little more. I have adjusted my rotation in such a way. So once it collapses, it rotates a full circle. Okay, okay, guys. I am I I I have noticed one thing. I see if you guys also also noticed. So uh, my. Uh, the shape layer that is behind uh, behind it can also be seen out from the first part but uh, we don't want it to appear now uh, we have done we are done with the previous layer so what we should do is we can go ahead and select the these uh, layers which are behind and go to edit properties again and split layer so that the layer gets splitted and delete those so that uh, the layer which we don't require is not, not there for us at other stages okay now we'll move on with the our rotation animation so starts off with the animation and now we want the rotation to be uh, uh, to move on in a very like swing manner okay like it's rotated once and now it's like a lever it's continuously rotating like this and this like uh, in this animation we have seen okay. so we'll do that here so 
first uh, we will uh, our key uh, adjust all the key frames so that uh, we can uh, we can see what's uh, we can adjust the uh, speed graph uh, later on we'll adjust our position uh, our sorry our rotation now so we'll go ahead and again we'll adjust the rotation okay i want to move it now little backwards okay i'll again move few frames earlier and again i will move a little forward and again and we we'll adjust the rotation okay so now after keep put, putting all the keyframes on in positions uh, we can see uh, it will swing along the rotation will swing along but uh, currently it's not that smooth uh, hence because we have not uh, put the easy is effect so we'll try to easy is it go ahead and select all these keyframes go ahead and select all these layers uh, after selecting right click on it keyframe assistant easy is and now we have to adjust our graph so currently it's the very not so good i do not like this and uh, motion because it's uh, very as uh, there's no dynamic to it so we'll add us adjust our speed graph by the same way we'll click on this uh, top graph editor i think and we'll try to adjust our speed graph so currently it's look like this little wavy form so, so it's very consistent we'll try to like start off fast then again go slow and then again start off fast Let's see how so we'll just click on this little keyframe we can, we can do we can drag it from the left so that uh, it starts off fast and then ends slowly and on the in the next part what we'll do we'll again drag it to the right and let me select it and we'll drag it to the right so that when it ends slow it should again start slow and ends fast and at this point when it ends fast it should again starts it should start fast and end a little slow with the same concept we have like a, this kind of a waveform uh, so everyone guys, guys uh, try to achieve this kind of uh, wave shape so you can definitely you can do it uh, according to your preference uh, how you like your animation to be so for current we are doing uh, like this and uh, you guys also try to achieve so that you can easily manipulate how this graph editor uh, can be edited uh, okay we'll go back to our timeline and i think uh, this animation is mostly done we will see from the start how it looks okay guys for the first part i think uh, this animation is uh, this animation is done